Okay, good morning uh, everyone, uh, professors and uh, my fellow students. My name is Godfrey and uh, today I'll be presenting my study about classification of African artifacts using the machine learning. Uh, Outline uh, my presentation on talk about introduction, method, results, discussion, and conclusion. And uh, why why do I have to uh, make this study? Because uh, uh, first of all, African artifacts involve interaction of people, geographical location, and culture. Here, if you see in this map, it's a, it's a map about a major. Uh, ethnic uh, groups in Africa. So uh, many people outside Africa, they think like we are African. They think that all Africans are the same. But actually, due to Africa is a very large continent and due to geographical uh, locations and the cultural issues, and uh, we are very, very different culturally and uh, although we have a little bit similar. So I come from East Africa here and uh, you find this art from here and art from there might be very different. So this is why also the reason why I have to use these uh, machine learning models to, to classify the, the African artifacts. Also, African artifacts not only for aesthetic appeal, but also serve as a window into the diverse cultural tradition and beliefs of African continents. These uh, cultures have their beliefs. So, the art uh, also uh, uh, brings the uh, show their beliefs in the, through their art. And nowadays, African art is not easy to recognize and I have a different type because I've been affected by geographical locations, as I say. And uh, this study choose to focus on most of Africa, uh, most of the artifacts in Africa. Artifacts in Africa. These are clay wood and metal. We have uh, several artifacts, maybe paintings or whatever, but uh, uh, this study I want only to use uh, clay, wood and metal. And when I say clay, uh, ceramic is inside the clay because ceramic is made by clay. And uh, they, I, I, I hypothesized that the machine learning could classify clay, wood and metal and make it easier to recognize uh, this artifact. And uh, also, as I said, nowadays African art is not easy to recognize and have a different type because of the being affected by geographical location. This study choose to focus on the most African arts, as I said, metal, uh, wood, and, wood and clay. And uh, as you see in this picture, uh, you have different kind of artifact. We have, uh, we have metal, we have uh, clay, we have uh, wood, we have a clay, we have a wood, we have metal. So there are different uh, uh, artifacts coming out from Africa. And uh, why also I wanted to do this study? Because I wanted to uh, accurate, the classi uh, accurate the classification that can ensure the appropriate display of artifacts with the necessary contextual information in the museum. So people in the museum, when they, uh, they classify and they put their artifacts, they have more information, where the artifacts come from, where which location and everything. And also aid the identification of the counterfeit and the forgeries, because there's a lot of forgeries nowadays in the, in the artifacts, so, so it's, these uh, machine learning models will help, uh, machine learning uh, experiment will, will help to, to, to identify and counterfeit the forgeries. Also, to employ machine learning techniques that we uh, can uncover hidden patterns, identify style, stylist variations, and gain deep understanding of the cultural significance and the historical context of embedded with uh, African art. And as well, with the technology of today, uh, to support the design and development of robotic system to handle and move these objects with the care and can be facilitated by proper identification of material Types. So using robotic, uh, using this uh, identification, we can help the robotic systems to, to know if you are holding a clay, you are holding a, a wood, or you are holding a metal, and to ensure safety handling and protection by fusing the power of machine learning with the human uh, experience. 
So this is the main reason why I wanted to do this study. And the method I used, I collect that data from uh, Google Images and a separate data set and then models and then find the results. Um, this is my flowchart uh, from the image selection, separate classes. Uh, my class is uh, Clay, Matt, and Wood, and then I use training with 80% validation for both uh, three classes and then input, and then, and then I use four models, which is uh, pre-trained uh, Inception, Inception, Linet, and uh, ResNet 50, and then find the output. Uh, the data set, I used a total of 88 raw images collected from Google and made up the data set. Then separate them into three categories, uh, clay, wood, and metal. And uh, then the data set, uh, I uh, separate them with uh, train and validation, as I say, 80% of train and uh, validation in uh, 20%. So uh, to, uh, to separate this uh, uh, data to prepare. And then uh, the ex experiment was based on K-Train framework, framework, which is Python library built on top of TensorFlow and the Keras that simplify the process of using machine learning tasks. tasks. The experiment performed using Epoch 30 and bedside of 32, and machine learning models uh, used the pre-trained pre inception, inception, Linet, ResNet, 50 and uh, were employed and the models were trained using images with a target of size of 224 by 224 pixel resolution with the RGB color uh, model. Also, the hardware I use, I use my laptop, that one is a processor, is a uh, ninth generation with a Core i5 and uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, uh, clock speed also 2.4 gigahertz, RAM with a 16 GB, and the DDR4 GPU, GPU gra uh, graphical uh, uh, process unit, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 with a graphic memory of 4 GB. Um, the models, I use uh, number one model, pre-trained uh, inception, this model, is, this model has already trained a large data set. That's the best thing about the pre-trained models because they have already trained a lot, a lot of large data sets, so they, they know the data set, so have been used to start support classification of this study already trained data set. So pre-trained are the best uh, uh, models because they've already uh, trained a lot of uh, data sets before. And inception, the model can learn and combine features at various levels of abstraction to execute parallel convolutions, which enable it to uh, concurrently capture fine grained and high level features. This is very good uh, model because it 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 captures the fine fine grained and high level features. And the inception model is made of maximum pooling layers and parallel convolution layers, which varies filter size by one 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 by one, three by three, and five by three by five. And uh, another model, which is Linet, this is the classic one. Sometimes we call it uh, default CNN, uh, but it's Linet, and uh, this is very classic model uh, architecture. And uh, full uh, convolution pooling and the fully connected layers are among the layers that make up the Linet architecture. When an image of an item is fed into this model, it uses the master features extraction and the classification skills to determine the artifact material type. Employing an optimization uh, process like random gradient de uh, descent to modify internal parameters in order to reduce the dispersed discrepancy between the expected and actual class levels. So uh, the good thing about Linux is like uh, it helps the, the gradient gradient of the image. So for example, if the image has a gradient, for example, in the dark to the white, the, 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 the model is very good to use. So that, that's the best thing about this model. Um, and another model, the last one, is uh, ResNet 50. This is effective lens. Uh, this is a, a deeper representation by addressing vanishing gradient problem by a skip connection and residual connection. Uh, this layer, this this uh, this uh, model uses uh, 50 layers and. Uh, 
it's called deep to classify artifact senses, can catch tiny details and variation in the visual attributes. So you can see that these four models are very good uh, models to use in, the, in my images. And this is my result. And uh, this table shows the performance comparison. Uh, in the pre train we got the clay, metal, and wood. And precision there, we get this number with an accuracy of 65. Inception, we get uh, these numbers by accurate, uh, accuracy of 61. And lay that with the actually little bit um, stable here compared to these ones. We'll talk about it when we discuss about this result. Um, Discussion of these results, you can see that Linet demonstrates the highest performance across all metric parameters, achieving the precision of 75% for both metal and wood classes. You see that Linet has this high performance in wood and metal in the precision, and also recall 74% in clay in both. Uh, in the clay and uh, wood classes and metal as well and uh, F1 score of 74 percent for metal and wood classes. So Linet in this result shows that high performance and a high accuracy which is 74 uh, percent compared to others and um, pre-trained inception. This is very interesting because uh, as I say pre-trained uh, models they've been trained with a large number of data sets. So, so but here it shows a very low um, results in accuracy. Uh, this model displays the lowest precision value of 40, in, even in the wood, it shows 46% of the wood class and precision. Also, it's a, a lower values in the recall F, F1 score compared to all other models. But also it displays higher constant values, 74% in clay classes, compared to other models trained. So you, you can see also in clay, the old number is the same, precision recall F1, F1 score. So it's, it's a little bit um, interesting to understand why this pre-trained inception model uh, showed that kind of result. And uh, these are uh, images from those uh, models. I won't talk much about these images because we have seen the numbers. And um, discussion. The results show that all four, uh, all four discard models with a lineage having the best accuracy of 75% have the capacity to, to categorize art, artifacts from Africa. Why I say that? Because all of them, uh, they show accuracy above uh, 50%. And Linux is uh, the highest performance can be credited, uh, credited to the way it was specifically created, created the job like uh, handwritten digital uh, digit identification. This Linux uh, model has been uh, found, has been used actually at the beginning to, to, to classify hand, handwriting uh, digits, especially in Chinese characters. So I think that is why, because it, it, it reads very little details, small details. So maybe that is why the reason it shows high, high, high performance, because of the, uh, when we see there's a lot of carved uh, information in the metal and wood. Compared to clay, when you create a clay, you don't carve too much detail. But in metal and wood, it's uh, there's a lot of uh, details. So maybe linear because of it's made for that it shows high uh, accuracy. And Resident 50 model in, in this study performed less accurately uh, than other models. Resident 50 deep, uh, deeper and more complex structure might have been trained to optimization more difficulty, difficult especially with a limited amount of data set. Maybe because I didn't have enough data set uh, for the Linux 50, that one doesn't really show the high uh, 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 accuracy. And the complex features and uh, the patterns specific to clay, metal, wood artifacts may have been difficult for the model to reproduce. It is uh, possible that ResNet 50's capacity to con converge to an ideal solution might have been restricted if these parameters had not been appropriately uh, calibrated uh, for it. 
and limitation of my study. Um, data collection for the study performed using Google Images, it had certain challenges, particular, particularly getting the large data set with the precise shapes of the categorized artifacts. As a result, the data set includes the variety metal of metal, wood, and clay product shapes, making it difficult for correctly categorize and the specific shape of these three different types of objects. Because uh, I just collected data set from the uh, Google Images, and uh, wood have different kind of shapes, and I didn't specific uh, uh, wanted to classify this kind of shape. For example, if you are classifying an arm, and then it is easy if you have classify wood arm, metal arm, and uh, clay arm. But here in the data set, I use different kind of shapes and forms. So might be that uh, is that is the, the, the limitation for me to get the, the clear uh, classification. So I suggest for the future uh, studies to concentrate on gathering and utilizing data set that contain precise shape of the three artifacts types in order to get a clear classification of the artifacts. As a result, it will be possible to analyze and comprehend each artifact type distinct, distinctively uh, qualities with more accuracy, providing deeper insight into cultural and uh, historical context of Africa. Uh, to uh, conclusion, the results indicate that all four models used to study this uh, show potential accurate, uh, accurately classifying African artifacts with the highest accuracy achieved by the inlet model. Uh, the outcomes show that four models are capable of uh, and, uh, for effective dete detecting and differentiating between various materials of types because uh, here I use various materials, you know, uh, metal. Uh, wood and clay have a different kind of uh, material that also reflect uh, the power of reflection of the light when you check the images is a different. So, but these four all four models support uh, can and capable to do that. And the field of uh, also it shows that in the field of the robotics can be they can benefit from the classification of the artifacts using machine learning models. The design and the development of robotic system can handle and uh, move this object with the care can be facilitated by the proper identification of the material type. Uh, programming robotics can um, apply uh, specific force and pressure based on the material composition and reduce the danger of the uh, damage of the improper handling. Uh, the ability to analyze and con contextualize these artifacts would further our understanding of African culture and heritage, we can successfully maintain and appreciate the cultural history of African artifacts by ensuring their safety, handling, and uh, protection by fusing the power of machine learning with the human experience. And I've seen them um, uh, also with the uh, with the machine learning when some some artifacts can be. Uh, cracked and have a crack or distorted, but using uh, robots can can mend can maintain the artifacts after getting the the real information from the from the machine learning. Uh, that's uh, my conclusion and acknowledgement. Uh, thank you, Professor Shao Wen Kun. Thank you, Professor Shi Wen Lang. Lung, Professor Yori, and uh, my colleagues, other David Alex, which I am uh, David. Thanks a lot. And, uh, these, are, these are my references. Thanks a lot. And uh, thank you. This is my country, the highest mountain in Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro.